Christ the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Good morning and welcome to worship as we gather and celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We, even though we are not able to be together in our church building, God's spirit of the risen Christ unites our hearts as we gather with our families in our homes to celebrate the good news. He is not here, for he has risen from the dead. So welcome to you and to your families, and we encourage you to follow along with today's service with the bulletin that was sent out via email yesterday. And before we begin our service today, I want to um, ask for those families who have children, before we start the service, if you would push, push pause and collect the following colors of markers or crayons and bring them to where you are worshiping. Here are the colors that you will need for today's children's sermon. Black, brown, green, gray, white, yellow, blue, pink, purple, and red. We are going to have a very colorful Easter worship service today, and so we ask that you would gather those and have those near um, later on in the service for our children's sermon. Let us begin this service of the resurrection in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now please join me in singing our traditional Easter anthem, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Sermon, and it is entitled A Colorful Easter Story. 
And I encourage you, um, you have gathered together the different colors of crayons or markers that I asked for you at the beginning of the service. At this time, please pass them around, one or two to every family member. And I ask that as I share the Easter colorful story with you, that when you hear the name of the color that you are holding, that you would stand up, kind of like our Easter version of aerobics. So we encourage you to participate in this way. Early on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and her friends got up while it was still dark. In fact, it was black as night. They went out in the darkness to go to the place where Jesus was buried. It was so quiet, hardly a bird was singing yet. They all felt so terribly sad because their beloved friend Jesus had died. They walked down the dusty brown path, telling each other stories of what they remembered about their friend Jesus. They remembered the times that they had followed him around the countryside. They remember the time that he had sat with them on a green hillside and taught the people. They remembered that one time when there wasn't enough food to eat, there was only five loaves and two fishes. But when Jesus blessed that food, there was more than enough for everyone. Soon they reached the garden where Jesus' body had been put in a tomb with the big stone to cover the entrance. They found the gray stone had been rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find his body. When they were trying to figure out what had happened, suddenly two men in dazzling white clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and they bowed their faces to the ground. But the men in the dazzling clothes said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he told you, while we were still all together, that he would be crucified, but on the third day he would rise again. Then they remembered what Jesus had told them. And they left the tomb to tell all of Jesus' friends and disciples what they had seen. And as they left the garden, the yellow sun was beginning to shine in the clear blue sky. And as they came to tell the other disciples what had happened, they noticed how beautiful everything seemed now that they knew that their beloved friend Jesus was alive. They noticed the beautiful flowers that were pink and purple and red. And so now today, all these years later, we remember how they went to the tomb and they found it empty. We celebrate on Easter Sunday with flowers of all colors. We give thanks for Jesus who rose from the dead on this day. We give thanks to God and we say, Hallelujah. But there's another great story in the Bible that is also a colorful story like our Easter story that we have shared. And I want to also bring up those stories as well for you to think about today as you reflect on the colorful stories in the Bible. One of them was one that we taught earlier in Sunday school, and that is Joseph's coat of many colors, just like the colors we have held up today. And the reason I want to share that story as well is because in that story, Joseph is going through a troubling time. His life was in danger just as Jesus' was. But God had plans for him. And God's mighty power saved Joseph and brought him to Egypt where he was able to help his own family and the entire nation. Um, and they were saved from the terrible famine that had gripped the land. And so another colorful story in the Bible where God's mighty power of love reaches out and saves his people. And there's one last colorful story in the Bible that has the same message as what we hear on Easter Sunday. And that is, remember the story of Noah's Ark. Things were going along really well with Noah. 
until one day God showed up and said to Noah, tough times are coming, and you and your family need to get ready. And so he told Noah that he should build an ark, and he should invite all his family members into the ark, and should bring the animals with them two by two. And they were shut up into that ark for over 40 days and 40 nights as the floods ravaged the earth. But God sheltered them there in that ark. And I think what a colorful story that is for us today because like Noah and his family, you and I have been shut up in our homes. And we have been wondering when signs of new life will be around us. Kind of like when they went to Jesus' tomb. When is new life going to appear? Remember, though, at the end of Noah's Ark story, when the rains finally stop, remember what God put in the sky, bright and colorful and beautiful, as a sign of his promise that he would always bring about new life, even in the face when times are difficult and storms come. Today, you and I are celebrating Easter, even though we are living in a snowstorm and we are living through a storm of plagues in the form of COVID-19. But we remember the rainbow. We remember the colorful promises that God shares with us on this day. That whether we are in an ark or in our homes or in tough times like Joseph was, or whether we come to the tomb expecting to mourn the loss of a loved one. That colorful promise of God reminds us that his love brings us and lifts us up to new life. And so today I challenge you, since you have time at home with your families, to celebrate Easter. I want you to take the markers and crayons and color hearts to remind you of God's love. Make, make hearts of every different color of the rainbow. And then I would like you, when you are done, to cut them out and hang them in your windows so that you can brighten your neighborhood with the beautiful promises of God's colorful love. Or also hang them around your house in a sign. That way, every time you see a new color, you can be reminded of God's colorful promise to you that God will lift you up and share with you the gift of new life. Happy Easter. And now I ask that you would join me in a word of prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks. For you give us a colorful promise that you are a God of life and not death. We give you thanks that you lift us up just as you raised Jesus from the dead. Help us to lift up others and to share with them your colorful promise. We ask this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Happy Easter, everyone. We continue today's Easter Sunday worship with a reading from the Gospel of Matthew. After the Sabbath, on the first day of the week as it was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, just as he has said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee, and there you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. When suddenly Jesus met them and said greetings, and they went to him, took hold of his feet, and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they shall see me. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. 
praise to you, O Christ. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, the risen Christ. Amen. Well, it's here. Easter 2020. And the journey leading up to this day has certainly been a crazy one. Ash Wednesday and Lent started off so normally. But it wasn't too terribly long before the ground began to shake beneath our feet as our lives were turned upside down and we were quite literally stopped in our tracks. Now perhaps you're thinking to yourselves, some kind of Easter this is going to be. No joining with extended family. No sitting in our favorite chairs here at church. No being together with most of the extended family at all. No seeing and visiting with our neighbors. What kind of Easter is this anyway? And this is what we were thinking before the predicted April snowstorm struck. Well, if this is where your heart and your mind has been for these past couple of days, take heart. This Easter is still for you. I say that because Matthew's gospel is not like the usual gospel that we read on Easter Sunday from John. In John's gospel, Mary comes to the tomb. She speaks with Jesus, and she thinks that he's the gardener. He says her name, and she recognizes him. It's a much happier, lighthearted version of what happened on Easter Sunday. But Matthew, well, that's a different story. And it's Matthew's version that can speak even more so to us in these current circumstances that we find ourselves in. So we ask ourselves, what's different about Matthew's gospel? Well, first note that there was a whole lot of fear on that first Easter. Mary and a few women are coming to the tomb to anoint Jesus' body. And as they grow close, they suddenly feel the ground begin to shake beneath their feet because there was an earthquake. And if that didn't shake them up, the sight of an angel rolling away the stone surely did, even before he spoke a single word to them. And so that first Easter started where you and I currently find ourselves today, trying to find a sure footing as the ground beneath us continues to shake. But it is precisely in the midst of this challenging situation that God's presence meets us and shows up. And notice how it happened. God's angel or messenger rolled away the stone in front of the tomb, right there in front of them. He moved the stone, shutting in the tomb. And then he sits down on it. I just love that little detail in the story. Not only did God roll away the stone for them, but he sat on it so that it would not get in their way or block their path to the empty tomb. What a marvelous message that is for each of us. That God will not only move aside the stones and other obstacles that are blocking our path, but he will even sit on them to make sure that they don't prevent us from encountering the miracle of the empty tomb. Then his gracious and miraculous gifts continue. The very first words of the angels are words of great reassurance. Do not be afraid. And in fact, these same words of reassurance appear two different times in this Easter story. First by the angel, and then later on from the lips of Jesus himself. Whenever scripture repeats things more than once, that literally means sit up and pay attention. And so I hope you hear these words of reassurance today from Jesus. Words of grace and hope, which call us out of fear and embolden our life of faith. Then after reassurance, 
comes the good news of Easter, the words that we have been longing to hear. He is not here, for he is risen. And the angel then invites them to come and see the empty tomb. Today, even though we may not be together in our favorite chairs in church, we are still invited to come and see and be changed by this mighty word of Easter. He is not here, for he is risen. The empty tomb is mirrored by our empty churches this year. And yet, Easter has still come. The tomb is still empty. And Jesus has still risen from the dead. Nothing, not even an unforeseen pandemic, can change what God has done and what God continues to do. Not only on Easter, but in all the days of our life. For God lifts us up and brings us to new life, to which we respond with great joy as we sing Alleluia and raise our voices with hymns of praise. Now, if we stopped here, today would still be a great Easter. But that's the thing about God's love. It never stops. There is always still more to come. Later on in the story, the women prepare to go back to their homes to tell others the good news of Jesus' resurrection. But when once again they are amazed, because this time the risen Jesus himself comes and stands with them. I wonder what it must have been like to look up on your journey and see Jesus standing right there in front of you. And yet we don't have to wonder, because that's the gift that Jesus is sharing with each of us today, his risen presence. And it is my prayer that each and every one of you will encounter his life-giving presence, not only today on Easter Sunday, but also in the days ahead, as we follow him forward beyond the current reality of COVID-19 a reality that is merely temporary. May Jesus' words of reassurance grant us the courage to move forward as together we journey to the other side of this pandemic. And one final word that Jesus gives them to hear on this day. Like the angel, Jesus invites the women to go and tell others the miracles that they have seen. They are called to share their experience of God's saving love. And that is the same invitation that he extends to you and to me on this day. And that invitation for us to go and tell and share God's saving love is so needed in our world today. I say this because I spoke the other day with my niece who works in a large grocery store out in Vancouver, Washington. This past week, she and another employee had to break up a fist fight that erupted in the aisles of their grocery store. And that is the second time in the past two weeks that this has happened. There is so much fear in the world today. There is so much uncertainty and anxiety not unlike the early part of today's Easter story. The ground is shaking beneath people's feet, and they are frightened. You and I can share the message of the angels and of the risen Christ. Do not be afraid. We can share the presence of the risen Jesus with them by doing as the angel did, by helping to roll away the stones in their lives, that prevent them from seeing the empty tomb. Perhaps the stones that they are encountering are loneliness. If that is the case, we can call. We can visit through a window or send a card. Perhaps the stone that they are needing to be rolled away from their lives is the stone of poverty. 
Perhaps they don't have enough food to put on their table or enough money to pay their family's bills. We can share food and we can help connect them to the resources that they will need in order to be able to get back on their feet. Perhaps the stone that is so large in their life today is wooden. And if that's the case, we can help them roll away that stone by listening and allowing them to share their worries. Because oftentimes, sharing our burdens with each other lightens the load for everyone by half. May God bless us as we live out the miracle of Easter and go and tell others of God's mighty and amazing love. Today, as you celebrate Easter in your home, may the presence of the risen Jesus surprise you in all kinds of ways. This Easter may be different, but it is still Easter. And because of God's mighty and amazing love, the tomb is empty still. Christ the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Amen. One of the ways that the risen Jesus encounters us is when we gather together in prayer, where his spirit is present with us and lifts us up. And so I ask you, please join with us as we share in this gift of prayer. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the wonderful celebration called Resurrection. We thank you for coming to us. We thank you for rolling away the stones that are before us. Anything that prohibits us from seeing the truth of the empty tomb. We celebrate this day that he is not here, for he has risen. Today we give you thanks not only for encountering your mighty presence, but also that you lift us up and you share with us that incredible gift of life eternal. We also, Lord, hear your invitation to go and share. Help us, Lord, give us the eyes in this coming week to see those who are in need. Help us to be your messengers so that we might help roll away stones, that we can be your presence to one another. We thank you too, Lord, for the opportunity to support um, our healthcare workers and all who are in harm's way. We ask today that you would guide and protect them and keep them safe as they work on our behalf in the hospitals and in our streets. We also pray for your incredible gift of healing especially with those who have struggled um, with this virus. We pray for their healing, and we pray for the healing of all others in our lives who are in need of your healing touch. We also remember, Lord, those who, like Mary and the women who came to the tomb, are grieving this day. Turn their eyes anew to the incredible message of this day, the joy of resurrection and the certainty to life everlasting. Bless our families today as we celebrate your resurrection, hope, and joy. Bless us in the coming days as you lead us forward, not in fear, but with great faith. We ask this in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time, I invite your families to join us in singing our sending song, Thine is the Glory.
Christ the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let us go in peace to share the good news. Thanks be to God. Happy Easter. Happy Easter, everybody. God bless you all.